Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're ready uh, for the last talk of the day, and you've had a great time at the conference today. Uh, my name is Matt, and I'm a first-year MBA student at MIT Sloan. Uh, our next speaker is Garthy, who's a, a computer science PhD candidate at MIT. Garthy will be discussing the research paper, uh, A Data-Driven Method for In-Game Decision-Making in Major League Baseball. It's going to be a 20-minute presentation, which will be followed by five minutes of Q&A. Uh, we'll be holding the Q&A up front here in the aisle, so if you have any questions, please feel free to head up to the aisle or we'll, we'll come to you. So that said, please join me in welcoming Garthy. Sure, thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, so I'm Garthy Ben Ganesha Pillay, and this is a joint work with my advisor, John Gutek at MIT. So to improve is to change, and to be perfect is to change often. When it comes to changing pictures, Detroit Tigers seem to uh, know their church you well. You know, you know what I mean? If you had seen the game two of uh, American League Championship Series last year, uh, Detroit cycled through six pitches in nine innings. In fact, they changed their pitches four times in their uh, eighth inning to lose the game. In fact, they had the lead five to one until that point. So when it comes to changing pictures, it is not how often, but when that matters. And we particularly want to ask the question, when to relieve the starting pitcher? So the managers rely on various heuristics, such as pitch count, uh, opposing team score. To, so they rely on such uh, easy to keep track measures to decide when to relieve the starting pitchers. But we want to derive a data-driven data model to assist in making uh, this decision. Given that this is probably the most important uh, decision a manager makes in a, in a game, it's very surprising that how little work has been done on this. And in fact, to our best of knowledge, there hasn't been any work on like, applying machine learning to assist with such uh, uh, in-game in uh, decisions in baseball. However, we, we understand that there are a lot of things that could go into this, into deciding when to leave the starters, but to make the problem more concrete, we want to posit as a classification problem of predicting whether the starting pitcher would give up at least one run if he is allowed to start the next inning. So now we have a very concrete problem, and, and we want to solve it. So how do we solve it? OK, so this is our problem. We want to predict whether he'll give a run, but the problem is run, is run involves a lot of luck and randomness, because you could come very close to scoring a run and still not, just not score a run with all the bases loaded. So we go slightly deeper. We look at pitcher's total bases. That includes home uh, hits, home runs, walks, intentional walks. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty established baseball statistic, originally used by Bill James. And this accounts for all the luck and, uh, luck and randomness involved, and it's a lot more granular than uh, runs. So what do we use for features? We, we depend on all the historical player statistics, current game statistics, and previous inning statistics. But lots of uh, information that we have, such as batter, batting team, venue, all these are categorical in nature. For example, how can we describe Fenway Park quantitatively? Right? So, for example, if you are building a model for Felix Dubrin, we can actually represent Fenway Park by the Ernst run component average for him at Fenway Park. But there is a problem in this way of handling things because often the data will be sparse because a pitcher might not have pitched in a particular stadium at all. Even if he has, you, won't, you might not have enough data. So in those cases, you want to shrink it towards the global average. So in this case, what is the pitcher's average ERC at Fenway Park? Based on, the time, based on support, based on how many times you have seen, the, uh, seen this happening, you want to average it. Now, having done this, we, have, uh, we compute uh, those priors. And, and that constitutes about 2 thirds of our 68 variables. Also, like. We have other, other typical uh, features that you would see, batting team score, pitching team score, strikes and balls in the previous innings, steals, strikeouts, et cetera. But, and also, that one of the interesting features we have is the pitcher batter prior for, for next three batters in the lineup. Again, we use counts, slugging percentage, ERC, runs, and hits. 
to represent all these categorical variables. Now, now we have a uh, predict, we have the features, we know what we want to predict, so we are building a, a regularized regression model. Now, if you, if you are, uh, this is going to get a little bit technical, so if you want to blank out for a while, it's fine, I'll remember to wake you up by the end of this session. Uh, so here, we want to predict the PTB, and we have the feature vector. We want to learn this weight, but at the same time, we don't want to overfit, so we apply a regularization factor to uh, accommodate, uh, account for the overfitting. And then we extend this across the pictures via multitask learning framework, so that here the same thing, but on the other hand, the weight is now made of two components, a component that is common across all the pictures, and there's a picture-specific component. That way, we build a picture-specific model, but still learn a single model across all the pictures. And probably this is the most important technical contribution in this paper. Now, having predicted the, having built a model uh, to estimate the PTB, now we want to convert it back to our original question of whether a run will be given or not. So, we learn a picture-specific cutoff on the output that we uh, learned earlier, so that if this value is greater than B, we will predict that there will be a run. Now, we use this framework to learn the uh, model, to learn the B here. Now, okay, so if you were uh, uh, napping for a while, now it's the time to wake up. We are back. Uh, so uh, that, that's the overview of the method that we used. We have the list of predictors. But what are the predictors that popped up in our model? So here, these, these features seem to be uh, universally important across all the pitches. But notice that the pitch count is missing in the list. After all, this is the, this is the, this is the one single feature that managers often depend on. The problem is, actually, there are other features, such as the inning. Uh, for example, there are a couple of other things that come, such as uh, the uh, walks, uh, sorry, balls and uh, strikes in the previous innings that actually make up the pitch count. So having included all those features, pitch count is no longer important. So that is the top predictor across pitches, but we have another list, because since we have a pitcher-specific model that allows for the variations across pitches, these are the predictors that seem to be important for some pitches, but not for others the ones with the highest variance. Some of the features appear in both the lists, like, for example, the third batter in the lineup. But on the other hand, there are other unique features here, too, for example, the home team uh, prior. So this actually, again, justifies the reason of having a picture-specific model rather than building one global model for, for uh, all the pitches. So what are the uh, take-home messages here? First, pitch count, although it's easy to keep track, we can actually uh, do a lot better by including finer features in the model. Of course, more information is better. And the second thing is, just because something is important for one picture doesn't mean overall it will be important for everyone. So you might want to uh, find the features that are uh, more informative for specific pictures. Now, so having built a model, we want to test whether, it's actually, whether it actually works, right? So this is the experiment we did. Uh, we train using the first 80 percentage of the data for each season. We use the data from 2006 to 2010, but we actually uh, test only for the 76 starting pitchers who pitched at least 500 pitches in each year, so that we have will have enough data to train and test uh, and be statistically significant. We evaluate a model related to a model that is designed to mimic the way the managers make decision. So this model is trained on the actual decisions of the managers of when to leave the starter or not. And so we, we use only pitch count and opposing team score to build this model, and this is actually 95% accurate in modeling 
what actually managers do, whether they release this feature or not, given these features. So okay, so we have our model and we have a manager model. The manager model decides when to leave the starting feature. Now we are going to compare them on, on, uh, on, on, on predicting whether, whether a picture will be giving a run in the next inning or not. So these are results, these are the, uh, results for both of our models across innings. As you can see, in the later innings, we are doing a lot better than the manager. In fact, those are the innings where it matters. Even if you predict the star is going to go for a run in the first two innings, you are not going to remove him, right? That's, that's the point of having a star. So, but here, where it matters, it actually clearly diverges. Now, we can see it across the pitches as well. First of all, you can notice that it, it spans the range, the accuracy spans the range, and this again justifies the reason of having a pitcher-specific model because you cannot do uh, well on all the pitches, but you can do extremely well for certain pitches. But what, what the most important thing here is there's a clear shift for our model across the pitches. This becomes more obvious when you look at the accuracy across teams. Again, there's a shift. Uh, for different teams fall under different bins. Again, we look at odds ratio, which actually tells you what is the likelihood of giving a run in the population that you predict to give a run compared to overall population. So the odds ratio here, for example, goes up to 14. That is 14 times more likely to give a run on the population that we predicted to give a run. Now, the infrequences are fine, but you want to see how well it can be applied in, in real world scenario. So we look at 15th inning onwards where it would actually matter. And there were about 21,000 innings in these five years. Of course, if you do the math in your head, there would be actually about 100,000 innings. There are, we, only the 21,000 innings make out here because we considered only the starters and also only those 76 starters. And for the, out of these 21,000 innings, on 5,000 innings, manager and our model would pull the starter. Nothing interesting. In 6,000 innings, manager and our model would leave the starter in, and they end up giving run in about 18% of the innings. But for about 9,000 innings, manager left the starter, but our model would not have and they end up giving run in about 32% of the innings, almost twice as likely as here. But interestingly, for about 5% of the innings, about 1,000 innings, manager pulled the starter, but our model would not have. There's no way to know what would happen anyway. So applying our model may lead to better outcomes, of course. And uh, for those games in, uh, in which a manager left the pitcher, the pitcher ended up performing poorly in 60% of the time. And overall, uh, we, dif uh, uh, we differed uh, from the manager's decision about 48% of the time. Now, of course, we can look at these results overall, but it's good to see some uh, anecdotes. So we will look at some of the cases from 2013 postseason. So first, we look at the Red Sox. So Red Sox used about four pitches uh, for starters, and we are interested in the innings after the uh, fifth inning onwards. And in the cases where we agreed with the manager, they end up giving runs in about 12.5% of the innings. But where our model would, would have removed, but the manager kept, they gave up run in 55% of the innings, about four times more likely to give up a run. Now, this is an interesting game. Tigers won the first game in the American League uh, Championship Series against Red Sox, and they were leading in the second game, actually. They were 5-1 uh, to one going into the eighth inning, and they had their, one of the best starters, Max Scherzer, on the mound. And the manager made a disastrous decision of going to the bullpen, and they screwed up in the eighth inning. Uh, costing the game, and they lost the lead, and then they lost the series. Now, what would I have done for Max Chesser? 
uh, Awamoto would have indicated that he shouldn't have been removed. And in fact, they removed him, and finally they had to use four pitchers, four, four relief pitchers, and gave up four runs. Okay. Like any, any, any real world problems, it comes, our solution comes with some caveats. First, our evaluation is one-sided. Of course, we wouldn't know what would have happened uh, when, uh, when the manager removed a pitcher that our mother would not have. And, and we understand the expected runs is not the only factor because you would have to consider the bullpen and how tired the pitcher is and whether you have a potential use for him in the following games, et cetera. And also, we are not looking at the mid-inning removers, which is a very, very important case, because often managers remove the starter only after giving a run in, in the middle of the inning after the damage is done. But that's what we want preempt. But we are not actually looking at the mid-inning removers, because there are lots of cases to look at if you go down that path. So in conclusion, the baseball analytics so far focused on uh, like forecasting a long-term performance of the players. But we think by applying machine learning, you can build models that can assist with in-game decision making. And such models could be used to actually uh, improve the quality of the decision making a lot in baseball game. So I want to thank uh, our sponsors and our data providers. Thank you. And uh, I would like to uh, invite my advisor also to answer the questions. Do you have any? Great. So we have a few minutes for questions. Are there any questions out there? No hey. Brady Little here. <laughs> hey, great, great work by both of you guys. I think this is really cool insight. Um, so I definitely agree that I think you know, major league managers they could probably do um, better by make, taking like. Uh, approach is more similar to how you guys have modeled things, and I think, um, you know, probably is a, a substantial part of existing errors being made are from sort of the, the stylized narrative that the managers are relying sort of more on heuristics um, just because, you know, they have sort of too many things to keep track of. But I think one sort of practical issue, so um, I think the most common outcome that you guys found was that uh, when the model and the manager disagreed, it was usually the manager had a little too much tendency to leave the starter in too long, and in practice, it sort of feels like, in in the model, so you 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 sort of have like a, there's no practical like I guess bullpen innings constraint in, in with that. In practice, I think managers have a, they almost feel like you can't really ride the bullpen more than this many innings in a season. And the managers, um, they might even be in situations they think, oh God, he looks really shaky out there. I'm gonna chance it anyway. Um, you know, how much how much of the current errors made do you think is due to due to you know managers not having the, there are just too many things to keep track of that you have to rely on heuristics versus the knowledge that you, ha you have to spare your bullpen to an extent. You know, it's of course impossible to give a, a scientific answer to that particular question, but I'm happy to speculate. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing to think about is if the conclusion is that managers should on average have a quicker hook, you could also think about restructuring your roster in, in such a way that your bullpen was not so vulnerable. Um, it's very hard to know. We did do some analysis separately looking only at late in the game where the game is either tied or there's only one run separating. And in you know, places where maybe the manager would be more inclined to think that today's game rather than tomorrow's game is what I'm focusing on. And even in that situation we found that our model was a, a better predictor than what the managers actually did. Uh, we are planning in future work to actually model the bullpen and take into account issues like what's the expected performance of the bullpen today and also, as you suggest, it's very important in baseball more than other sports to say what about tomorrow and the next day as well. So those are things we, we have the data and we do intend to, to look at those, but you're asking exactly the right questions. But again, in some cases, they, they, they remove the pitcher early, like in ALCS too, right? Yeah, there were those thousand innings where we thought the hook was too quick, and most notably that one uh, LC ALCS game where we thought the hook was too quick. Hi. Uh, I really enjoyed the paper. I'm a little unclear how you got from the classifier to decide 
whether the pitcher is going to give up a run in this inning or not to the classifier to decide whether to leave him in the game or not. So I was wondering if you could clarify uh, that a little bit. If, uh, so the, it's, it's, a, it's direct uh, in the sense if, if we predict that the pitcher is going to give up a run, then we are going to remove him. Yeah. yeah. So the basic, it's very draconian. It says if the expectation is that the pitcher is going to surrender a run in, the, in an inning in the second half of a game, that you, you would take them out. But, but then the, manage, the idea here is manager can actually take this information into their decision making, whether he'll give up a run or not. So actually the one we used was a lot unfavorable to us in the way that we evaluated it. But that doesn't have, that, that's not something they have to use anyway. Uh, it's, uh, and you can't guarantee that, right? That they won't give a run in, in the next three outs, of course. This is not in the rest of the game, we're asking. But I think the, from a technical point of view, the thing that focus on is that it is a surprisingly, at least to me, accurate model of predicting whether a run will be given up. And, and so one way to think about it is we have that, and as Garthy said, if you have that information, you can then decide what to do with it. Yeah. And so I think the real thing to focus on is how useful would it be to know that the probability of your, man your starter giving up a run in the next inning is 0.8 mm -hmm. or, or 0.2. And it's hard for me to believe that wouldn't be useful information to a manager. And also aside from uh, the technical difficulties in modeling the bullpen, if you could, then you can then make a lot more informed decision. Then oh. you can also model them and you can see which, who is going to do better. <laughs> um, great job, uh, and this might be a question uh, that would be better to answer if you considered bullpen, but uh, did you look at uh, lefty-righty matchups at all? And uh, if you did, uh, were the effects just not there? Or It's, it's part of our feature vector, uh, the handedness, but we didn't actually specifically look into that. But, but as Garthy says, it was one of the features we looked at, and it did not show up as one of the top features, but again, it's implicit in that, that one of the features is the expectation of how that pitcher will do against, say, the first and third batters in the upcoming inning. And incorporated in that feature is probably the lefty-righty matchup, but it seemed better not to look at that, but to look at the prior. And so again, this is what Garthy said in his talk, these, very, these more fine-grained statistics seem to be very useful compared to the grosser statistics like pitch count and lefty-righty matchups. Hi, um, good work. Uh, I'm just wondering on your prior stuff, are you looking only in-game or are you looking at more data for the prior matchups um, on the batter pitcher stuff? So we use the whole training set to compute the priors. So in the sense, if you're using the first 80% each, the prior is computed on the 80%. Actually, it's from the previous year, but the prior is computed in the whole set. Yeah. So, so it's not just in-game prior, yeah. It, right, it's, it's, it's in-season prior. In-season. Now, we could also look at previous seasons as well, but, but we're focusing on this, in this work, he used, Arthur used in-season priors, but all of that. But even with that, you have to shrink it. If you just use in-game priors, there's so little data, you wouldn't find it useful at all. But some of the in-game statistic actually will come into the model via, like, for example, the uh, uh, sorry, strikes, balls, runs, uh, bases, advanced, like, through other features in the model. I think we have time for one more question. All right. Well, please join me in thanking Garthy and John.